So welcome to the Citizens Climate Lobby of Virginia Climate Justice Art Show. We are delighted that you're here with us. This is great. Uh, as we share the wonderful work of Virginia artists on the subject of climate justice and climate change. I'm going to stop for a minute because I just remembered, um, Rose, did Stephanie request that we record this? We are recording. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, okay. So welcome everyone. And I'm Sharon Malley and I'm one of the volunteers working on this project. And I'd like to acknowledge the other folks who have been working on this. We're all volunteers and um, none of us had done anything like this before. So um, we're happy that, that we had so many submissions and that we're at this point of the show. So um, Chris Cetineri, Yasmin Marrero, Carla Brady, and Rose Hendricks worked with me on this. On this, We all worked together, together and thank you all so much for all of your work on this project. We are also grateful to our Virginia chapter leader, Stephanie Burns, I think maybe she's with us now, who was the inspiration behind doing this show. Okay. So as you can see, it's, it's sponsored by Citizens Climate Lobby and that is the um, website, cclvirginia.org. That's the Citizens Climate Lobby of Virginia. Okay, so I just wanna say, before we get into looking at the art, I wanna say a little bit of something about climate justice. And, um, Climate justice is a term to acknowledge that climate change can have different social, economic, health, and other adverse impacts on underprivileged and marginalized populations. Climate change is happening to everyone, as we all know, but because of inequitable social and environmental conditions, those who contribute the least to the problems are often those who are affected the most. In Virginia, those living in marginalized communities are more likely to experience the negative effects of air pollution, flooding in their communities, you know, if they live in low-lying areas, and storm damage. Um, and so many of our artists uh, chose to respond um, to the issues of climate change that affect all of us. And um, we realized that climate justice is a new concept for many people. So that's why I wanted to like sort of just lay out what it is. So thus we wanted to honor the work of those who feel particular concerns for climate change, as well as those who focused on climate justice in their art. So you're gonna see, um, you know, some, some works, have that climate justice piece and some have more of just about climate change in general and what it's doing to the environment. So we're most appreciative of, of um, Nancy Ramsey, who's our juror. And she's an abstract painter who values exploring the natural world and often references nature and the human form within her abstract work. She exhibits widely, particularly in the Mid-Atlantic and West Coast. And she currently maintains a studio in the Torpedo Factory Art Center in Alexandria, Virginia. So I would like to welcome Nancy and she's going to take us through um, the art, the slides. Thank you, Sharon. And thank you to all the artists who participated in this inaugural show year. Um, and congratulations. It was really fun to look through all the art. Um, so there's some beautiful work that we've got and it was particularly exciting to read the um, artist. There's some beautiful work that we've got. It was particularly exciting to read the Can you mute? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do today is take you through each of the artworks that were submitted and read you the artist statement. You can see on your screen the artist's name and the title. So I'll read you a little bit about what they said. This piece is by Tom Whitaker, 
called Hear the Earth, See the Maker. And Tom's photo was chosen as the cover design 2021 calendar that celebrates creation and includes quotations from Pope Francis's 2015 letter on care for creation called Laudato Si. Um, the image is an example of Tom's personal photography of nature in North America. This next piece, Bioluminescence, is by Kate Jamison. It's one of our award winners. Um, and there's such elegance, sorry, Kat. There's such elegance in Kat's capture of darkness and light. Um, and I think you'll be intrigued to learn how she's created such a beautiful painting from actually a really tragic occurrence. So let me read you Kat's words here. Bioluminescent algae blooms are naturally occurring phenomena, but global warming is seen by scientists as a prime culprit behind accelerated growth in recent years, forcing the world's waters to blow anew. Cited as environmental changes that contribute to accelerated bloom growth are factors such as drops in salinity and fertilizers polluting rivers that wash into ocean water with greater amounts of nutrients than these algae need for growth. It's an eerie, beautiful sight, but it's also a grave threat to other sea life. These brilliant blue blooms are actually tiny bioluminescent creatures, such as dinoflagellates. After consuming the toxic algae they prefer, these masses release poisonous ammonia and other chemicals. They also breathe large amounts of oxygen, dropping the level in surrounding waters and killing other marine life. Scientists don't expect these growths will subside. And here we have another piece by Kat Jamison called Coral Coast. And of this one, Kat writes, as an older artist, I think a lot about the startling atmospheric changes from my upbringing into 2021 and the long-term future. Transgression and disruption to plant, animal, and human life through ambient light, dying oceans, coastal flooding, salt parched flora, and so many other climate factors galvanized me to visual interpretation in this large watercolor. And here we have Linda Maldonado's The Beauty Running Through the World. And Linda's captured this waterfall so nicely for us. This painting depicts the lush glory of the tropical rainforest, which is the endangered source of life for indigenous peoples and animals that depend on the rainforest's diverse abundance and plants that may hold untold benefits for humankind. And another piece by Linda, notice her, how she's collaged in different elements in the rocks sing with water. And Linda says, deserts are rich ecosystems where water can be found in unexpected places. Yet we know so little of the complexity of living systems and environments such as this and arrogantly assume we can destroy what is there to create artificial constructs that do not fit with or respect the land. This piece is by Barry Lindley called Caboclo House in Brazilian Amazonia. And I believe Barry's been to these places that he paints. So he's speaking firsthand and telling us a little story about each one. The Caboclo people of Brazil of indigenous or mixed ancestry live in the edges of the Amazon River and houses are built to accommodate the 30 foot variations in river depth. With deforestation, the changes in rainy season timing and magnitude will cause severe threats to their way of life. And another piece by Barry Lindley, Eskimo Fish Camp in Spring. I have no volume. Um, Barry writes, the Yupik Eskimos of Southwest Alaska traditionally do subsistence fishing from camps built along the rivers where salmon migrate. This camp is on the Kuskokwim River near Bethel, Alaska, and has already been moved back from the time this painting was made due to riverbank erosion. The salmon drying racks are empty because it was not yet the season for the salmon run. The Kuskokwim is a tidal river with flow velocity and level much influenced by the changes in the Bering Sea, as well as by changes in snowfall and glacial melting upstream. The Eskimo villages are already suffering threats to way of life from global warming and sea level change. And salmon migrations are shifting to the Arctic.
This piece is by Sheila Flanders called The Storm. And this is one of the award winners for tonight. And Sheila's strong diagonal lines really underscore her subject. And they also almost work as an abstract piece as well as the realistic piece that she has here. I thought that was kind of a neat effect. And Sheila writes, with climate change, there are more destructive storms destroying homes and forests. Victim by Rebecca D'Angelo. And Rebecca writes, the environment is one of my overriding passions. Like many, I am deeply affected by climate change and the disregard for our planet on a deep, viscerally personal level. I found this bird after one of those strange new storms blew in. And I think Rebecca was really effective here in making us feel this visceral reaction by combining the bird that she found with a photo. And here we have Rebecca, second piece, Celestine, AKA homeless. And she's got this beautiful, hauntingly beautiful piece of the trees. And she's put with it a, some words from a Cree Indian prophecy. Only after the last tree has been cut down, only after the last river has been poisoned, only after the last fish has been caught, only then will you find that money can't be eaten. And Rebecca says, this is one of my all time and most repeated quotes. The petrified trees were taken in Celestine, Mexico. I have a deep and abiding love for the natural world and do all I can in my own way to honor and preserve and advocate for her. Here's Jason Rylander still here. And Jason tells us a very interesting story here. For two and a half years, climate and environmental justice activists maintained a continual aerial blockade of the proposed 42 inch fracked gas Mountain Valley pipeline route until they were forcibly removed on March 24th, 2021. If you visited the camp near Elliston, Virginia, you would have seen this banner hanging along Yellow Finch Lane near the entrance to the site. This painting was created to commemorate their courage and commitment. While the 932 day tree sit is no more, the resistance continues. Really nice tribute. Okay, now Julie Jacobitz, how did I do Julie? <laughs> Julie's narrative pieces tell a great story this one, Summer in Heat, says, in the center of the work, a young girl stands in an ideal summer from the past. On the right and left of the work, we see her grown up. Now the heat of summer is melting the ice that the walrus needs to live and warming the waters that dolphins swim. Death also interacts with these creatures as the warming climate kills species who need a cooler planet. And Julie has a second piece for us, which also beautifully tells a story. This is balancing on ice. In the center of this work, a baby plays with a toy car. The baby sits on an ice floe, which may melt at any moment. At the right and left of the baby, two endangered animals, polar bear and walrus, look on. The ends of the painting show the new winter we face with dream weather events and the endangerment of our planet's creatures. Okay, thank you, Nancy. We're, we're about halfway through. And um, I mean, so far, I, I think you would all agree the work that we're seeing is just really, really wonderful. And, um, you know, just expresses such a deep concern for, for our earth, for the environment. And um, so we're pausing for a commercial break. Uh, Rose is going to speak to us about Citizens Climate Lobby. And then we'll go back and we'll see the rest of the pieces. Great, thanks Sharon. Um, and thanks to everyone who's submitted and joined tonight. These are really moving pieces. Um, and I'll be quite brief because I know we're here for the art. So um, my name is Rose Hendricks. I'm 
um, a chapter leader in Fairfax County and um, just wanna share a bit about Citizens Climate Lobby. As this slide says, um, we think about our solution to climate change as um, democracy. We exist to create the political will for climate change solutions. Um, and we do that by enabling individual breakthroughs in the exercise of personal and political power. Um, Citizens Climate Lobby is a nonprofit, nonpartisan grassroots advocacy climate change organization. And we're focused primarily on national policies that address climate change. Um, we work towards the adoption of fair, effective, and sustainable climate change okay. solutions. Uh, okay, you can go to the next one. And um, we have many values, but the one I really wanted to call out tonight is that we empower everyone in exercising their personal and political power, regardless of race, ethnicity, nationality, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, religion, ability, socioeconomic factors, or political affiliation. Um, we seek out, support, and elevate people whose voices may not have been fully heard. In the next slide, thank you. And as I mentioned, we focus primarily on national solutions to climate change, especially this one in particular, which is called a carbon fee and dividend policy. Um, what I mean by this, the carbon fee part is a policy that puts a fee on emissions of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas right at the source where they're emitted, starts low and grows over time. Okay. Um, and this is important because this is a factor that will drive down um, carbon pollution. And then the second piece, which is really um, almost as important, is the carbon dividend, where 100% of the revenue that's brought in through this fee goes back to Americans, and everybody gets an equal share, children get a half share. Um, and then this dividend offsets any increases that you might experience in prices for for energy or any household goods um, as a result of the fee. This is especially important because the majority of low-income houses will actually come out ahead with this policy. Um, this is because they tend to have smaller carbon footprints and so receiving the dividend will um, not just offset but actually outweigh any increase in costs that they experience. You can go to the next slide. Um, a few things we really love about this policy is that it will reduce America's fossil fuel pollution by 30% in the first five years alone um, and get us to net zero carbon pollution by 2050. We know it's not a silver bullet. We need a number of different solutions, but it is um, a, uh, the single most powerful tool we have to reduce our carbon pollution. Um, so with this policy, the government will make fossil fuels more expensive and then businesses will compete to provide clean energy solutions. Um, this resulting innovation will reduce our pollution fast and efficiently and give us plenty of reliable and affordable clean energy. In addition, it'll improve health and save 4.5 million American lives over the next 50 years because it will reduce the pollution that we breathe. Um, and, and poor air quality is responsible for as many as one in 10 Americans, um, American deaths today and, and sickens thousands more. Um, and then lastly, as I mentioned before, this policy is affordable for ordinary Americans because it puts money in our pockets. Um, and this is kind of, a, we think of as like a carbon cash back payment to every American to spend with no restrictions so that low and middle income houses um, come out financially ahead or break even. And then finally, on the last slide is that we would love to invite you to join us. So I, I will put this link in the chat. Um, so that you can just click or copy and paste it directly. Um, and yeah, we would love to meet you more and to work with you. So thanks and back to the art. Thanks Rose. And now, um, yeah, since, since everyone has really shown their passion for the environment um, through their art, um, I would imagine this would, might be a next step for some, some of you folks. So, um, all right. Back to Nancy. Thank you. And here we have Jennifer Duncan's Treasure Beach, which was chosen as our best in show. Jennifer's work features kind of an ominous reality looming over the abstract beauty that's in the forefront there. And Jennifer relates a personal connection to Treasure Beach. She says, Treasure Beach is located along the lower Potomac River, close to the Chesapeake Bay. 
I have walked it for more than 40 years. Each year it changes and loses sand from sections. Water rise prediction maps show it will be underwater in 20 years. I will miss its natural beauty, wildlife, and the memories of taking children there for birthday parties to hunt for treasures. And this is Jennifer's other piece called Barometric Pressure. And I think you'll agree that her piece really shows the shifts and patterns that she mentions when she writes, dramatic shifts in our weather patterns are happening much more often. Like many people, I can feel a storm coming from miles away as the weight of the atmosphere shifts. My painting, Barometric Pressure, denotes the heaviness and density of the air as a storm approaches. Here's Kate Trigstad's Uprooted. And if you look real closely, you'll see the figures that Kate has added in. So make sure you notice those. Kate says, dramatic climate changes create unfit living conditions, leading this group of people striving to survive, being uprooted and seeking refuge elsewhere. Roger Schultz, A Field Surrendered. Roger's piece from afar has really strong values, but if you get in really close, you'll notice he has these intricate brush strokes, real patterns to the brush strokes. And Roger says, climate comes before man, is greater than man, and if not respected by man, it will destroy man. One way or the other, we will surrender to its power. And I think we definitely feel that power in this piece. Joanna Stone King's Sea Level Rise. And Joanna combines photo images to tell a foreboding story. The photograph is a composite of Virginia's shore, sinking Virginian buildings, and a POC resident with an all seeing eye umbrella arriving on dry land. She is ready to leave the flooded neighborhoods to start a new beginning. In Sue Shimante's Is Anyone Listening? I really appreciate the symbolism that Sue explains for us below. And I think we can also relate when she says, climate justice was a new term and concept for me. I think it is for many of us. After conducting research to better understand what it meant, I considered the current political situation and wondered how the adverse impact of climate change on underprivileged populations could rise to the level of importance to ensure the allocation of necessary funding and resources. This led me to consider legislation and action through Congress. I included the blazing sun around the Capitol to highlight both the changing climate and the heat or pressure that is necessary for legislators to take action on important issues such as climate justice. The Capitol is broken in pieces to highlight the current divisiveness in our nation, including the divisiveness associated with the scientific validity of climate change. This is Phoebe Peterson's Water Water. Phoebe also received an award tonight. And you notice that Phoebe is not only a very skilled painter, obviously, but you can tell she's also a very careful observer of the natural world. Phoebe shares Samuel, Coleridge, Samuel Taylor Coleridge's famous lines, water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink from the rhyme of the ancient mariner were written in 1797, but remain poignantly relevant today. In our current environment where 1.1 billion people worldwide lack access to clean drinking water. And in our oceans, whales are dying after ingesting large quantities of our discarded plastics. My painting, Water Water, strives to illustrate the beauty of our precious water resources and the necessity to protect them. In Linda Murky has really captured the movement of underwater creatures in endangered bull kelp. And Linda says, kelp forests are in danger of disappearing due to climate change. They provide a home to a diverse complement of marine animals and plants. They are a food source. They're an important part of the ocean engines that provide the planet with oxygen while scrubbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. If they disappear, Earth is one step closer to catastrophic collapse. Eileen O'Brien's melting 
is really poetic in that it's captured its intended statement in just the necessary amount of paint strokes. And Eileen writes, this piece, along with several other similar ones I've created, stems from my concern that the ice caps are melting and that we are losing land masses as ocean levels rise. Casey Jones uses an interesting, fun kind of a substrate for us today in Camper's Delight. And Casey says, reconvene with nature and witness the growth and rebirth that flourishes while uninterrupted. Let's hope nature can do the flourishing <laughs> despite us. And in Mad World, Casey recommends educate to fear the rising seas and the super volcanoes to respect the cliff's edge, to understand how the world can protect itself when we stop listening. This is Natalie Sar Tarasar's Kiss of the Sea. And Natalie's big piece is a six foot by four foot strong statement. Kiss of the Sea was inspired by National Geographic profiles of indigenous peoples in the Pacific Islands. It explores our immersive and sometimes exploitative relationship with our planet's oceans. And this is a second piece by Natalie called The Mantle. And in The Mantle, Natalie has our eye moving all throughout these darks and lights. And she says, the mantle is inspired by the plasticity, regenerative and reproductive characteristics of magma, which is a strong theme in many non-Abrahamic religions of indigenous persons around the world. It explores the planet's natural system for creation, destruction and recycling. And in bleaching, Leslie Clark has very delicate layers of encaustic wax and ink that are showing us a warming planet means a warming ocean. Global warming causes algae to abandon the coral, causing the coral to turn white or bleach and become extremely vulnerable. And Leslie's nursery is a warning cry as well. She says, healthy coral is the ocean's nursery where the smallest of life gains a foothold. It is crucial to the entire food web in our seas and on our planet. Sorry about that. Oh. Pardon me, okay. Now we have Erica Hughes, Weeping Wing. Erica has layers of symbolism woven into this painting. Erica writes, the pattern of the co coverts and primary feathers of the Andean condor symbolize the empty spaces left by those for whom there is no voice in climate justice. The poured acrylic swirls are the landscape into which we cut with violence. The final green pour creates a weeping net into which we trap ourselves. I'm just gonna add, Nancy, I just noticed this piece is 48 by 48, so it's quite large. Ah, another four foot by four foot. Yeah, it's amazing. That's one thing we miss when we see them on screen instead of in real life. And Monica Lewis brings us both natural items and man-made elements in snake wires. Monica says, um, the electrical and communication boxes attached to old apartment buildings connect the residents through a disordered tangle of wires to the transformer attached to a nearby utility pole. Residents rely on electrical and digital devices but have no choice in how the energy that powers them is sourced and distributed to them. Electrical companies and service providers are monopolies that benefit from keeping customers dependent upon them. And Moretta Evans, Potomac River Bank, shows a sun, sunny highlighted plants growing along the riverbank. And she writes, we need clean water to sustain ourselves and to sustain the beauty in nature. Clean water allows natural plant growth, which in turn sustains animal life and also stabilizes in this case, the riverbank.
All right. Well, that that's it for for the show of the art. And um, if you all have any, we have plenty of time. If you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat. And um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen in a minute, and we can just you know talk amongst ourselves, so to speak. Um, but you know, if you have questions for the artists, a number of the artists are are with us, um, and also just to let you know that the CCL Virginia website has the artwork up on it, and when you're scrolling through, if you want to see the art closer up, there's directions for how to um, sort of remove it from the scrolling bar so that you're just looking at the image. Um, and also uh, the, the National Citizens Climate Lobby website is citizensclimatelobby.org. So thank you all. Um, as I said, I'm just going to uh, end the show and um, stop sharing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, does anyone have any, oh, I see we do have some chats. So Rose, would you like to uh, um, go through that and see what? Sure, yeah, we've got just a lot of enthusiasm um, and lots of thanks and um, positive sentiments. I don't think we have any questions yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking. Looks like Julie has a question. Turn your sound on, Julie. I have a question about Phoebe's work, um, the first place winner. Phoebe, is that a is that the scale you usually paint at? And um, what medium did you use? And, and what was there an event that inspired that painting? Uh, that's a little bit larger than I normally paint. Um, painting is about. I think it's 40 inches across, something like that. Um, and I've been working on these underwater and surface paintings for about a year during COVID. And um, a lot of them are just reflecting some of my concerns right now. And so uh, this show coming along was kind of perfect timing for me because this painting is really about um, water preservation and water, just being conscious of our water use. Um, so I hope that answers the question. How about you? I love your paintings. I miss seeing them on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, 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 years, like, but I, I really enjoyed your work. <laughs> thank you. It's really neat to hear exactly what everyone was thinking and the stories behind it and how thoughtful everyone's been in tying it to the environment and climate justice. I've just been amazed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question also. Um, Nancy, what is, what's your uh, connection to the um, climate lobby or citizens climate lobby? You know, it's really relatively new to me too. I kind of agreed with Sue. It was, I had to educate myself about it as well. A lot of my work ties into the watershed and man's influence on the watershed, but the, the concept of climate justice is really a pretty new one to me. How long has the group been around? Sharon, when did the citizens climate lobby begin? Um, I, you know, I'd like to call on Stephanie Burns to talk to <laughs> She's a leader. I, I would say 10 years, but it might be longer. So oh, I see 2011, Monica said. Oh, okay. okay. It is 10 years, right. Um, Good long time. Yeah, so Stephanie, are you with us? She I am. Me. This was like so beautiful. I'm, I'm just so, it, what we do in Citizens Climate Lobby is so, um, policy focused and data focused. So I wanted, um, you know, I was talking with Sharon and I was like, I want to bring the emotion into what we do, why we do what we do. And, you know, not, um, and really just kind of express how we feel about this issue emotionally. And there's no better way to do that than through artistic works. Um, so this has just been so delightful for me to see um, uh, kind of all the, the thoughtfulness and the different aspects of this issue that even I don't think about, you know, um, just the different perspectives on, um, you know, the different places around the world that are impacted by this. Um, 
So I, I just want to thank everyone so much for contributing to um, the show. And um, I want to keep spreading these pieces and sharing them on our social media. So if you have um, like a Twitter handle or something, please feel free to um, uh, direct message me in the chat and share your Twitter handle. I'd love to tag you when I present your, you know, uh, when I tweet your pieces out on our account. Um, yeah, so I just wanna make sure we, we get these works out there and get people's stories out there as much as possible. Yeah, Stephanie, I think that you had also talked about a blog or something. I mean, maybe uh, some of the artists might want to even elaborate further and we can, um, you know, have more written about um, their statements and, you know, their concerns. Yeah, that would be wonderful if we can, we could post, you know, sort of pieces on Medium or, um, uh, you know, we can sort of talk about what longer form format um, to present some of these stories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would love to just whatever we can do to, you know, get the the work out there. Um, I would love that. And we, we are on Instagram. Um, so Yasmin uh, manages our Instagram account. And uh, so we can also post on mm -hmm. Instagram. If you have an Instagram um, uh, username, you can um, share that with us as well. So then we can tag you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and Chris has posted for us CCL underscore Virginia is the is that's the um, you know that's the Instagram account, uh, and he also posted the CCL website where the where the art is located, and here's a question for for Julie. Um, sorry, I'm just jumping in. Rose, could Julie talk about how she chose the images for her panels? Hi, well, I, um, I'll just say I painted encaustic. So what you're seeing is encaustic and um, other mixed media. I suppose when I, I always create a story with my piece. So with each painting, I first, and I, and I have a whole global warming series that I, that I was doing. Um, I think I started it 10 years ago. Um, so there's a, so they're all part of my series and I, I and most of them are 14 by 42 inches. So um, I went through the seasons. I've, I've got like a summer, fall, spring and winter. And then the question was, how, how do I pick the images for that? Um, I, I grew up, uh, going to a beach house. You know, my parents owned a beach house on the Chesapeake Bay. So I, I stood in those marshes when I was a little girl. And um, I, I suppose that's what kind of inspired that panel. Um, but yeah, I, I typically I come up with a feeling for the painting and what I want to say. And then I, I sketch it out. And it just takes a long time of, of working back and forth. I, I don't know how to say it other than that. Thank you for asking. And thanks for having me. Monica has also added in the chat, what did Casey Jones paint on? But I don't think Casey is on the call. I'm not sure if that was included in the submission or not. It is in the submission. Casey's done, it's acrylic on maple. Um, and I believe looking at it, to me, it looks like a skateboard. Um, I don't know the right skateboard word, but the skateboard panel. Mm -hmm. Somebody else might know the correct word for that. I know that's not the right word. I think it's a deck. There you go. I knew it was something. So that's what I think it is, but we know it's maple. And that was Carla, everyone who has done quite a bit of work on the website and, uh, you know, just some graphic design. And so has Chris, you know, a lot of, a lot of work in the background to, to do this, along with the wonderful art that um, we've been seeing tonight. It, we're just really grateful that, that everyone's all of, all of your submissions, You're just all beautiful. Yeah, the committee's done really great work. Thank you all for all your work and for finding the different ways to support the artists to put them up on the website, as well as having the show and advertising on social media. So I'm sure the artists all are very appreciative of everything you guys have done. 
So any anything else, Rose, any other? It's like. I might just add, if I might, uh, that the, you know, the battle over the Mountain Valley pipeline is is still ongoing. And, uh, you know, I, I painted that image after uh, visiting the tree sit a couple of times and bringing them some supplies. Um, the last two sitters were removed uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, they are actually still sitting in jail uh, on a misdemeanor charge because the judge is refusing to allow them bail. They've been in jail for almost a month now, uh, which is pretty uh, amazing, uh, considering that uh, you know people with far more significant uh, you know crimes uh, against lives and property are uh, let go within a few hours or days of having been arrested, uh, which just goes to show that, uh, you know, people are facing significant trials to try to defend uh, planet Earth. Uh, and there is still, you know, a 303 mile pipeline uh, that is yet to be fully permitted, that has yet to cross some of the most wild uh, rivers and streams in Western Virginia um, that uh, they're still trying to trying to get through. So, um, you know, be alert to uh, a lot of different environmental groups from Appalachian Mountain Advocates, the Southern Environmental Law Center to Sierra Club and others that are working to uh, uh, stop this and, and, you know, weigh in with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and the Virginia Department of, of uh, Environmental Quality uh, to make sure that they hear your voices uh, on this, uh, you know, this project, which obviously is, is going to you know, not only affect a lot of communities, a lot of, uh, you know, national forests and, and wildlands, but uh, is no good for the climate. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for having the show. Thanks. Jason's story would be a great one. If you guys can manage something with the blogs, that would be a great one to start with. I think people would really be astounded to learn that. I certainly was. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Anybody else? A any um, comments? I'm sitting. I'm starting to sit in the dark. I'm going to have to turn the light on. <laughs> Monica has a comment. Amy. <laughs> yes. Hello. Um, my name is Monica. I'm in Richmond, and I did the piece of the brick wall with the wires to the um, energy box, the communication box, and I just wanted to um, explain that. Um, there really are things like that in Richmond. Um, you see even worse connections on older, older homes and older apartment buildings. And um, I think I wouldn't have thought of that kind of a composition if it wasn't for the urban sketchers movement that I've been a part of for a couple of years. And I'll just, I re had a realization a while ago that the urban sketching movement is a lot like CCL. So humor me for just a moment as I explain. Um, the great thing about CCL is that we are chapters of a large organization and urban sketching is the same way. There are people all over the world that are drawing what they see right in front of them. And um, their mission is to show the earth one picture at a time, one drawing at a time. You know, some people paint, some people draw with pencil, ballpoint pen, but we do have a little manifesto of drawing what we see, drawing the background, being truthful to what we see. Um, and what, what else is it? Um, uh, the idea of like telling a story, telling a story and being able to identify this is where I drew it so that someone else could find it. So I just thought I'd share that because it's a really nice movement right now and it's all over social media. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I agree with you. I see the wires everywhere like that. <laughs> I'm in Alexandria, it's the same deal. Oh well, yeah, thank Sharon, you. Sharon, Nancy. Um, thanks for uh, allowing me to participate in the show. Um, I was wondering, Nancy, do you have a site as well as a location at the uh, Torpedo Factory? Do I? Have I'm down the road. I'm down the road in Vienna, so I'm interested. Perfect. Do you mean do I have a website? 
or, uh, or yeah, an in-person site? Um, I was just curious if you have if you do have a site as well as as well as a location. I have a website which is under reconstruction at the moment. <laughs> it's okay. Nancy Ray Art, and it's a matter of my deciding. I've got to decide the final images, and once I make my mind up, that will be live again. Um, but I also have art in several other places around locally as well as in the Torpedo Factory. So um, I'm happy to, if you want to email me or message me on Instagram or something, I won't make everybody listen to everything, but <laughs> I'm happy to share if anybody's interested. Okay. Thank you. What's your handle on Instagram? Oh, it's at N A Ramsey Art. Do we have a question for Jason? Um, Jason, would you mind sharing informational links on uh, the background of your piece? You know, the, the links you were talking about, if you have any links for those environmental groups. I think one of them was, well, I guess Virginia Department of Environmental Quality was one, but. Sure, I can, it may take me a moment to do that, but, um, uh, there's a, a group called uh, Appalachian Mountain Advocates, which has been spearheading some of the legal work. Um, and on Instagram, there's a group called Appalachians Against Pipelines, um, which I think is just mm -hmm. that. What is, is there, uh, let's see what their URL says. Um, can't actually see it on my phone, but let me see. Let me see here, paste. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's Appalachians Against Pipelines, I think, on all one word on Instagram. And, and they've been actually sharing the, the, you know, the words and, and so forth from the folks who've been manning the tree sits. Um, you know, beyond, beyond that, uh, I'm at Defenders of Wildlife. Uh, the Southern Environmental Law Center has been doing a lot of work, um, has been doing some work on this as well. Uh, the various aspects of, of the fight. Um, uh, the Sierra Club and my group worked on uh, challenging a biological opinion uh, related to endangered species protections. And then there are a whole host of Clean Water Act issues uh, that uh, have been, uh, you know, before DEQ and before FERC, uh, for Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which permits pipelines. So, uh, but I'd, I'd start with those groups. Um, and if I can quickly find something in the chat, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks. Potomac River Keepers, someone has mentioned also does legal work to protect our waterways. Yeah, there's water, there's river keepers for all of our different rivers um, that are part of the, uh, the watershed of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, Cancelimvp.com is a Cancelimvp, yep, good, good spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Um, where are we gonna find that information, did you say, if we wanted to have it all in one place? Do we just go on the CCL? Do you mean the the, um, the art the, show itself? Well, the, no, the links that Jason was talking about, you know, I'm not sitting here writing them all down. Is there somewhere we can go to find them? I wonder if we could send an email out to everybody with various I, links for discussed. I think that would be really nice. That would be nice. I was going to suggest we could um, the art show email account, um, which I think right. if, if most of you submitted pieces, um, we could use that. Um, so Jason, if you would wouldn't mind emailing that account again <laughs> um, with your your links, I can uh, send it out to uh, folks on the call. I will also post that. Um, I will post that email in the chat. So if anybody is not familiar with that email address, um, just just feel free to send an email to it and say, I would like information from the meeting and I'll send something out. Thank you. Okay. And I just put a few things in the chat. Wild Virginia is another group that's been involved. Um, Apple Mad, Appalachian Mountain Advocates, and, and then you know you can kind of go from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. That should cover it. This has been great to, um, I mean, it was Stephanie's idea 
to have this with CCL Virginia because all of us who are with CCL do this national lobbying work. And this has really been great to, you know, kind of zero in on our, on our regional issues. Um, I am, I grew up on the, on the Chesapeake Bay and I just have just really strong, you know, concerns and feelings about, about the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And, and um, so it's just been great to see all of your, you know, your, your reactions and responses. Yeah. Can I ask one more question? Um, are you involved at all with the Torpedo Factory? Because I have a studio at the Torpedo Factory and I think it would be, you know, an opportunity. I don't know about whether the rule, what the rules are, but an opportunity to get the word out you know, to tourists, not just to local people. If there was some way you could put, you know, some kind of, you know, information in the Torpedo Factory. Oh, that's interesting. Like I could look into that maybe in my studio to see if they could, you know, let have a little section maybe that would be for environmental issues in the torpedo factory, you know? Yeah. That would be awesome. Like uh, an opportunity, doesn't it? I mean, I don't know what the rules are down there because the city is really in control and all the artists are fighting about it. But I'm sure it seems like a win-win, doesn't it? Yeah. And they do have temporary installations occasionally in various spots that can be open to other people. So I'm, right now, I think that's all kind of on hold, obviously. But when they start doing that again, it might be something great for CCL to apply to. I think it's really it, great. good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, temporary installations right in the center, like right in front. Right art league area, you know, like high school students or whatever, mm -hmm. and it would be themed. So that would be, that's very interesting. Great idea. Okay, Carla has posted the, the um, email account, the G, it's Gmail, artshow.cclva at gmail.com um, and says, please email this account if you'd like to share or get any information from what we've discussed on this call. All right, I think we're going to wrap this up unless there's any burning ideas or questions. Um, thank you all so much. We're just really appreciative and um, we've just been greatly inspired by your work. And we look forward to continuing the dialogue as we um, uh, you, you know, use the work in social media and just show the work and, and maybe, you know, uh, blog and you know other just other ways that we might be able to get the word out there. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We're Thank inspired you. by your work. You you were doing great work there. But thanks. Thank you so much. Night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.